Hi, good evening and welcome to Victor Arch Tijuana Online. Whether you are tuning in online from Facebook or YouTube, live or on demand, we know that God has a special word for you today. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Mo and Sister Liz Igareda, we want to welcome all of our faithful church members. Also, a special welcome to any visitors and first-time guests. Don't forget that there are two easy ways you can help our church online platform reach as many people as possible. All you have to do is make sure you subscribe and don't forget to share the link with your friends and family. The service will begin shortly. Please enjoy this special song as you prepare yourself to get everything the Lord has for you today. Blessings and have a great service. If I told you my story, you would hear hope. If I told you my story, you would hear love, but never gave up. And if I told you my story, you would hear life, but it wasn't mine. If I Welcome to Victor Irish Tijuana Online. Tonight, we just want to welcome each and every one of you on behalf of Pastor Mo, Sister Liz, and the leadership of our church. 
Amen. To all those that are tuning in to our Friday night special service, tonight we have a special treat for you. This is my story, life after deportation. But before we go any further, we want to get into our tithes and our offerings. The Bible says in, in John 3.16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that for those that believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we begin to look at our lives and we're able to see who God is within our lives, everything that he has done, delivering us, everything that he provides for our lives, I believe that that should encourage you and I to be faithful in our giving. That's just a little token of appreciation, to appreciate who God is within our lives. Amen. To be faithful. We can always come to the church from 8 to 4 o'clock. Amen. To deposit your tithes, your offering. And like I said, let us not forget about United We Can. Let us pray for the offering. Father, in the precious name, God, Lord, of your Son, Jesus Christ, God. Father, we come humbly, O oh God, Lord, before you, God, Lord, thanking you, God, Lord, for who you are with God. Within our lives, God, Lord, tonight, God, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that you would bless, God, Lord, his finances, God, Lord, that you would multiply them, God, Lord, that you would use them, God, Lord, for the furtherance, God, Lord, of your kingdom. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let us stay tuned in to see the video announcements. Hey, God bless you, Victory Outreach Tijuana family. How are you guys doing this evening? We are here at the Connect Zone to give you guys more information on how to stay connected. On Mondays, we will be having our men's mentorship group with Pastor Mo here at the church. Make sure you get here at 6.30 for prayer. Also, don't forget to read your chapter for this week. On Tuesdays, we have our life groups. So stay connected with your life group leaders for more information. Wednesdays, we have our gang services at 7 p.m. via Zoom with our very own gang overseers. You don't want to miss out on a powerful word. On Friday night, don't forget to tune in through Facebook or YouTube for a new series, This Is My Story. You will be able to listen to some powerful testimonies of what God can do in people's lives. This Saturday, we will be having our Gems devotional at 9 a.m. with our very own pastor's wife, Sister Liz. On Sunday, we will be having our Sunday morning celebration service at 10 a.m. Y para todos los que hablan español, todos nuestros servicios los domingos serán traducidos. And this is it for our announcements for this week. Stay tuned, stay connected, and God bless Amen. you. Thank you for the announcements. Now I have the privilege to introduce, this is my story. This is where you're able to hear true events, true testimonies, true stories of the lives of people after being deported. Help me welcome live on stage this is my story. Hi, good evening. And we want to welcome you tonight to This Is My Story. I am your host, Pastor Mo, and I got with me tonight my beautiful wife. She's my co-host, Liz. Amen. It's so good to be here tonight. And we are excited yes, because this is our fourth episode of Real Life Stories. And this is why it's called This Is My Story. Um, you know, life after deportation. And God has done such a mighty work in this couple's lives. And so I'm excited to, to hear and to, um, for you all to know them in a more personal way. Right, hon? Yes, that's right, baby. Uh, also, before we, we want to, uh, before we go any further, uh, we have a story to tell because he has done the work and that's Jesus uh, he has done the work within our lives. But I want to start off with a portion of scripture. And it's found in Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. It says, they overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And if it wasn't for God intervening and touching our lives, we wouldn't be here tonight sharing our story uh, of what's taken place. That no matter what obstacles, what situations have come our way, we've overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. And with me tonight, we have our two guests with me. We got Jose and Sister Erica Rangel. And you know, they're one of our leaders here in our church. Uh, Sister Erica is part of the worship team there. They also, both of them uh, are part of the children's ministry, right Liz? Mm -hmm. Part of the yes. children's ministry. And also Jose, he's one of uh, uh, he's my translator every Sunday. So maybe you've seen him 
you've seen him there and you'll hear his voice and he's one of our tra translators, but I've seen uh, what God has done upon their lives uh, since they've been here. And we know that God is still getting the glory uh, through all this. Right, my love? Right. And um, it's just exciting these last four weeks of, um, you know, talking about different stories. We really see the miracle working power of God, of how he has restored, how he has saved us. Uh, some of us, you know, it took deportation for us to know Jesus in a more personal way. And so, so let's not, let's not wait too long. I think we, yes. we can go right into it, right? Yes, Ron? yes, of course. Okay. Well, we're gonna start off with uh, Jose. Jose, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, where did you grow up? Uh, you know, maybe a brief testimony. Not too long because we're going to go into that in, in a few minutes. Amen, amen. Well, uh, just to go along with everything that we've been saying and along with the stories, I mean, it's similar, but there's also uniqueness in it. So um, I was taken to the country, to the U.S. at the age of four or five years old. And I spent most of my life over there. So like, a, like many of us, you know, knew the language, learned the language, uh, got familiar with the culture, and went to school. And, you know, uh, just pretty much a little bit of my testimony is that I did grow up in a good family, um, didn't come from a broken home, uh, but nevertheless got involved with the wrong people. Um, as a matter of fact, um, did you have mom and dad in the house? No, I didn't. It was just my, my mother, really. Oh, okay. So, sh so your Sing, mom single you. Single parent did the, the paper of both mother and And how many father. siblings? Only me and my brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes a big difference, though, with, with an absent parent. Yeah. Because yeah, you see a lot of times um, the type of lifestyles that we, we f find ourselves in is usually there's an absent parent, right? Or maybe both parents, maybe grandma raised them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you're looking for role models and maybe find them in right. the wrong places, especially for the backgrounds that we come in. So that's just a little bit about I uh, found myself uh, being deported at the age of 20, no, almost 31 years old, I believe. Got arrested in 2012, did a term, and then found myself here in Tijuana. Wow. Okay. Wow. So you went through the whole school. You went through kindergarten, junior high. Did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated from high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And so then did you pursue anything after that? Or um, you just... After that, I, I, I actually um, uh, went into uh, opening a small business. I was actually a business owner. And uh, I was able to, even though I'd never had legal status, I, was, I would, had an uh, EIN number. I would pay my taxes and eventually was looking to get legal status, but you know, got into the wrong things and found myself, got myself in, in, in some trouble. Yeah, yeah, so you're kind of living two lives. And, th and that's what it was uh, as far as, uh, you know, because I didn't grow up, like I, I mentioned, I didn't grow up in a, uh, in a bad neighborhood. I maybe had uh, bad influences around me, but it wasn't until later on. I was like a late bloomer. I didn't grow up in a, all that until really the gang life until I was 22, mm. so 22 and on. Yeah, yeah, that's so different. It's, yeah, it's different than most uh, most gang members, you would say. So you're, like, attracted to it. Yeah, and, it, and it, like you mentioned, it was something that, you know, I had everything that the normal person would want. I had a career, I had a business, mm. but yet that double life was, like, I spent my time and energy and finances even to fund it, to run it, to... Uh, try to make it happen, you know, and it was just like that was most, you know, even though I did I was an alcoholic um, I did some drugs. I sold drugs, but it was I didn't have to it was just because of the rush of things It was like that was my drug. I was addicted to the street life the neighborhood the, the, the friends the homies and, and all that mm. Wow, that's heavy man. Maybe you're right there and you could be uh, you could relate to what he's talking about uh, but before we go any further, we want to hear from uh, Sister Erica. Erica, a lo mejor nos puedes dar un uh, breve testimonio. ¿Dónde creciste y cómo estuvo tu vida? Um, pues yo soy de aquí de Tijuana. Okay. So I'm, here, I'm from right here from Tijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, nunca me he mudado, siempre he estado aquí. I've never moved. I've, I've been here born, born and raised. Sí, yo uh, tuve una infancia, uh, pues digamos, normal. I could say that I had a somewhat normal of a upraising. Una juventud un poco, sí, un poco más difícil. I did have a juvenile life a little bit more difficult. 
Y aunque a lo mejor yo no vengo de un trasfondo de drogas and o even, alcoholismo. Even though I might not have a background of drugs or alcoholism. Pienso que a veces uh, las personas traemos otras cosas que tienen el mismo peso en nuestras vidas. But sometimes I do believe that we do carry burdens that have the same weight as the sins that you, you know, so others might have committed. Sí, yo conocí a Cristo a la edad de 12 años. I actually met the Lord at the age of 12 years old. En una iglesia bautista. In a Baptist church. Así es. Um, y vengo de, antes de moverme aquí al Cancer Victoria, yo vengo de una iglesia pentecostés. And then uh, before I made the move here to Victory Outreach, I came from a Pentecostal church. Así es. Okay, amen. Hey, uh, how many children do you guys have together? You guys have any children? Uh, yes. Well, she, we were from a blended family. Okay. So I have three children with her. And then I have a daughter in the States as well. She's uh, 13. She's just turn, turned 13 years old. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so we have three boys with her. One's 14. One of them's 10 and 9, I believe. Okay. And your daughter? And my daughter's 13. 13 years old. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um... Una pregunta para Erika. Um, um, con, cuando llegaste de, de Alcance Victoria, ¿qué, qué te piensas? Or, cómo, ¿Cómo te sentí? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te sientes? Cuando yo llegué aquí por primera vez, uh -huh. eh, fue algo muy impactante. Uh -huh. So when I got here for the first time, it was very, I had a, a very, imp, uh, it was very, Shot, you could say, impact. Mm -hmm. Fue muy, muy, muy hermoso. It was a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. Conocí a Dios de una manera diferente. I got to know God in a different way. Eh, me cautivó. It actually uh, eh, captivated me. Las predicaciones de Pastor Mo. Uh, the preachings mm -hmm. of Pastor Mo. Fue algo totalmente diferente a lo que yo conocía. It was actually something different than what I was used to. La manera que de trabajar aquí, de salir a las calles, el amor para las personas que no conocen. It's the way that, you know, the love for the souls to go after those that, you know, that we don't know or they don't know. Fue muy hermoso. It was mm, something very beautiful. Me encantó. I sí. loved it. Y es muy diferente, ¿verdad? Sí, mucho. Y um, usted um, tenía una, um, uh, or how, how would I say, maybe you can uh, help me translate, mm -hmm. Jose. Um, have you ever been on the other side in the U.S.? ¿Tú has estado en el otro lado, en el, en Estados Unidos? No, nunca. Okay, so no, no, wow. No. So these are like two different worlds. So esos son como dos mundos diferentes. Sí, ¿no? bastante. <laughs> Mucho, muy diferentes. <laughs> Did you ever think you would be with, uh, you know, like knowing a man? I mean, I know he looks uh, like he never broke a plate. Yeah, how did you guys meet? Yeah. ¿Cómo, cómo se conocieron? Right? So dice que si... Tú tuvieras pensado estar con un hombre como yo, o sea, de que se ve que no rompe un plato, pero de su trasfondo. ¿verdad? Pero y él preguntó qué es, cómo nos conocimos. Ok. Uh, no, no pensé estar así, pues por su apariencia física. No, ¿Verdad? Ahí. Con su. Yeah. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? Su barba. barba. Su barba. Ya, yeah, todo eso. Se yeah. sí. cumplió los tatuajes. Right? You've, yeah. you've always covered your tattoos because I didn't really see them when you started coming to our church. Mm, always long sleeves. I mean, I have some in my hands, but... Yeah. So he wanted you to captivate his heart first. <laughs> y luego, la historia después. ¿Verdad? Mm -hmm. Maybe so, they... so, te pregunta de que, um, cómo te cautivó porque, pues, yo um, escondía mis tatuajes, o sea, cómo me miraba diferente, mi barba, y, uh, qué es lo que te atrayó. Su carta de presentación de él para conmigo fue Cristo. So his card of presentation for, for myself it was that I saw Christ in him. Mm. Sí, fue era un un hombre diferente. He was a man that was different. Un cristiano de verdad. A mm. real Christian. Uh, yo cuando estaba cerca de él yo sentía paz. When I was always close to him, I'd converse with him and I would feel peace. Y la unción de Dios sobre él era and, muy fuerte. And the anointing of God over his life was strong. Y yo puedo decir que era lo que yo pedía en mis oraciones. And I know that that was what I would ask for in my prayers. Sí. Y uh, um, pues empezamos una amistad, tuve más uh, cercanía con él y pues cuando menos pensé yo ya estaba muy enamorada. So we established a friendship, and then after that, before I, she knew it, she was madly in love with me. 
<laughs> and I'm sure you like saying, I'm Come sure you like it. translating it was that. Madly in love. <laughs> madly in love. Em emphasis. Amen. And what attracted you uh, with her? Because maybe you, uh, you know, you've been, been on the other side. You've had a different uh, uh, people that maybe you were involved with or, or, or what? Actually, tell us the story, right, of uh, the, how you got here. Because I think we, we went there a little bit, right? Okay. So we'll go back a little bit. Well, as far as how I in my yeah, transition. because I know Erica, you know, God blessed you with her, but yeah. there is more story well. to that. Before you were single for a little bit, yeah. when you got deported, you you had um, your baby's mom, right? Yeah. So pretty much what we want to portray is that, um, you know, I had a, a previous relationship, and that was with uh, the mother of my child, uh, my 13 year old on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to share with you guys is that. You know, a lot of the times, you know, I'm blessed now. That's why we opened up with, with, you know, what God is doing now, the ministry, my wife, my children, blended family and all that. So all, all the blessings, right? But there was a process. And so the process was that when I found myself uh, being arrested, I tried to work things out. But um, just to get a little bit more personal is that, you know, I was a gang member, you know, even though I was a late bloomer or whatever it was. And so I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a husband. Um, you know, I might have been a good provider, but maybe that was it. After that, it was just all bad. And so by the time I went to prison, um, I fully surrendered to the Lord. I knew why I was there. And so it was just all, um, you know, getting to know God in, in an intimate way. And so through that process, you know, I, I thought that what I had to do is try to make, you know, mend things, you know, try to make things right and try to fix my relationship with the mother of my child. And so we attempted through... Uh, the three years that I was in uh, in prison, and we were—I mean, it worked out. I guess you could say as a long distance. She would come to visit me, you know, uh, asking for the money for my books and the sopas and the coffee and all that, and try to be as as romantic <coughs> as, as I possibly could. But you're I'm, trying to keep it working out even through all this. Yes, right? and yes. Then, like preparing for that to happen, which could be deportation. Yes, I mean, we talked about that, I mean, in the sense that, like, um, you know, we prepared for it. You know, if I get deported, you know, she was going to stay out there until she fi fixed her legal status, and then she would eventually make the move. Mm. So, but I mean, tragically, things didn't work out that way. Um, I didn't know till last minute. Uh, we ended up, um, we attempted to get married while we were in jail. It didn't happen. And then it just kind of, it, it was a downward spiral after that. So it was just, I got deported, had to go through the shock of that, the separation, uh, her not being able to come visit me. And so um, after that, uh, there was uh, certain circumstances that happened uh, that separated us finally, the infidelity. Uh, and so it just, we never were able to work it out after that. You know, so I just remained single and I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to serve the Lord. I wasn't looking. That's kind of what it was different between when I met her uh, because I wasn't looking for a relationship, not to make myself all like I'm walking on water, but um, I just fully surrendered to the Lord. I, 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 the process hurt. It was painful. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, we spoke about it um, you know, before this that a lot of the times when we were in prison, we knew of stories and men that you know, they were married for years and they had children and last minute, you know, their wives would tell them, you know what, we're not going. And they could cross. They had legal status, and they were able to do that, but they just did not make that transition. Yeah, those so, are the tragedies. Yeah. That, that's some of the, the true tragedies of um, what happens uh, when you um, when someone gets deported, right, Yeah, huh? yeah they are the true tragedies. And even when you heard that, did you ever think this is going to happen to me? As far as getting deported, or no, as her not coming with you? No, no, it was just that it was a, it was a last minute thing. It was just a mm -hmm. like be, I knew the last probably a day or two before that I was going to get released, that I was getting deported, and then after that is just uh, sh you know she never made obviously the move because she couldn't because she didn't have legal status either. Oh. So it was you know all those complications. So that was a hardship, right? Yeah, there. there was just all complications all mm -hmm. around. But as far as me thinking that I would ever be in that position, no. You know, I thought, I, I, you know, we planned it for three years. You know, we're, we're going to work it out. You'll be over there. I'll do ministry. You'll send me my daughter every so often. I'll get established. But it just did not work out that way. Yeah. And so then um, after that, there's a little bit of history, right, hon? I mean, there's yeah. something. Yeah, uh, me, me and Jose go way back. We, we met each other in prison this last time. And 
2014, that's when I met Jose. Yeah. There, uh, he was serving God. We were both serving God at that time. We were, and we, you know, it was funny because as we would get together, I would tell him, man, this is what God, I'm part of Victory Outreach, this is what we're going to do. And who would have ever known that we we're going to end up being serving God together and, and that God was going to bring you here to Victory Outreach. Amen. Did you ever hear about Victory Outreach or ever been involved with Victory Outreach? No, no, no. I actually, uh, you know, uh, just to go with, along with my, my testimony, I mm. fully surrendered when I went to prison. So it was, it's going to be eight years now that I've been mm. serving the Lord, right? And so my, my upbringing was in prison ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I served there, uh, you know, whatever the Lord would have me do, being discipled. Uh, so I heard about Victory Outreach, but like I was uh, mentioning to you guys uh, before, I heard about uh, the ministry, but the way that it was portrayed to me was that they already have uh, everything going on. They're, they're organized, it's a big ministry. So in my thoughts, in my finite mind, <laughs> I, I just figured like, well, you know, they're already got everything they need. You know, right. who, who's ever going to think that they, they would need me or they would, there would be a place for me. You know, mm. ultimately that's kind of, you know, my thoughts. So I heard about it, but, you know, I kind of just said, no, I, I never thought that meeting you in, in jail would ever kind of bring us back together to that, to this place where we're at now. And so when you got here, you thought you got involved in another ministry, right? Yeah, so when I got here, there, there were some brothers that were already waiting for me in a Spanish ministry. Similar vision, but just at a smaller, uh, smaller. Uh, I don't know how you would put those in words, but it's just a smaller level, I guess. Um, and then I ended up, uh, we would do chocolate sales and fundraisers, and I would sell burritos at Talvista. Some of you guys actually... Uh, that have me on Facebook and that I've met and I've invited to church. You guys remember those days when I was selling burritos. It was because of uh, fundraising. I would sell chocolates and that's actually where I bumped into. I think you were there as yeah, well. Yeah, and Rosarito, Rosarito, I think Rosarito think and I was selling like, chocolates. Yeah, how long ago? Like four years ago. I think that was in 2000. Uh, right before the church. Or, or the beginning of 2016, I think. Yeah. That's when we ran into him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And who would have ever thought? Because we've we seen, we seen deported people everywhere. Yeah. Right? All around TJ. Exactly. Actually, we, we first transitioned in Rosarito. And yeah. we didn't think, you know, we were going to stay here. So our, st our story is coming soon. But <laughs> um, right now it's uh, Brother Jose. But we met Jose. We saw Jose on the street selling chocolates. And so we're, and it's funny because we all can tell who's deported or who's who, you know. And um, without even, right? Without right. even... Yeah, and then he just but looked, then he looked familiar. I said, I know, yeah. I know this guy. So we made a, uh, we, turned we turned around and we started talking to him. And man, long story, uh, to make a long story longer, here he is with us. You know, now he's one of our leaders. Uh, he uh, translates our, our Sunday morning service. Uh, their, uh, his wife who does the worship. Like we said, they both do the children's ministry. And also, they also have their own life group here in La Colonia Libertad. You know, so we are able to see what God is doing within their lives. And, and we just want to let you guys know that uh, there, there is a place for you here in Victor Outreach, Tijuana. You know, uh, we know that God is doing something great within our ministry, within our city. Right, my love? Yeah. And that's kind of what I wanted to um, uh, hear more of, uh, Jose, is that even though you, we saw you, right, four years ago, you didn't make that quick transition because at that time you're already in ministry, right? right. With that church. Because in that, in your mindset, you thought, no, they need me over here, right? right? Victory Outreach has it all yeah. together. Yeah. Or very big ministry. Yeah. But as far as our church, we're pioneering. So, yeah. um, so maybe- We need all the help we can get. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe you can um, go from that point and, and how you ended up in, in the doors of Victor Arch, Tijuana, Libertad. Okay, so pretty much um, when I met you guys there at the, doing the sales, I got in, uh, Pastor Mo, I believe, got in contact with another brother that you know, <clears throat> we all uh, were in prison together, and we got invited. We did not know, as a matter of fact, when I got the invitation, I thought it was just a uh, Bible study for English speakers, mm -hmm. so figured something new. Um, I was already serving at the church for about a year now, um, when I was in the, in the previous church where I was at. So I had grown roots, you know, I had grown roots. I had established a relationship with the uh, pastoral house. I had my ministries established. 
But um, I could tell, I mean, I, I didn't know any better because I didn't know about any other ministries anyways. So, but I could tell in others that there was something that they were missing. You know, they didn't feel connected. They didn't feel a connection. They felt out of place. Even though we were Christians, um, they still saw us differently. You know, and we, I'm, I'm not sure you guys can relate, but, uh, you know, they see the bald head and they see the tattoos and you tell them you're a Christian. They want to see first. They want to see right. your walk. And they want to see that you're living it out because, you know, they'll, they'll raise the eyebrows before they actually let you in and embrace you. So we have to we have to go through that. It's a little bit of prejudice, but, uh, you, you know, nevertheless, I was able to win them over. So once I established that ground, um, when I heard about the Bible study here, to my surprise, it was already, uh, you guys had already done the remodel. You guys had already opened up and doing your fir first few services. And so when I came here, it's just uh, walking through those doors and being with people that come from the same background and say similar stories, it just, it just made sense. There was like a click, mm. you know, and so it clicked and, and the friends that I came with, um, they just said, how'd you feel that, you know, this is what we've been missing. This is what we've been looking for. And so I was kind of like in an internal struggle there because, you know, then the, the time came to where like, you know, where, where am I at? You know, I can't just be. Because you were committed. Yeah. You were committed with the other ministry. Yeah. yeah. And so it was like I was serving there, but then when services were over there, I would jump over here to, mm. to check it out, you know, just see, mm. see what, what was taking place. And so, um, you know, just to kind of throw it in there, actually, that's when I, I, I was uh, establishing a friendship with my, with, who is my, now, uh, my wife. And I remember that when I was having the struggle, because it came to that point, it's like, hey, you got to make a decision whether you're over here or you're here. You got to, you know, decide. And uh, we remember on that. Yeah. And, and we, I, kept, we kept trying to get you to commit over here. <laughs> but uh, he just like he was just so quiet. Those of you that have been with us for a while, we all knew Jose at the very beginning. Uh, but man, we've seen you grow. Amen. And so. Um, obviously, it was through prayer, uh, you know, fasting, and then I asked uh, people that I knew, you know, godly, godly people that were influences over my life, and one of them was actually my, uh, my wife. Uh, she was a friend at the time, and I, and I asked her, I was like, hey, what do you think? I was like, this is what I'm going through, and she knows, uh, you know, the church that I come from. She actually grew up there as well, and um, she told me, he's like, you know what, this is what I feel. You know, there's, you know, I know that you grew, grew roots. I know that you care for that family over there, but I believe, and this is not, you know, I'm not making this up. She told me this before she even knew she was, she would come here. She's like, I believe if you go to this church, Victory Outreach, it's like going to the major leagues. She's like, mm -hmm. where, where you're at right now, you're stagnant, you're comfortable, you got your ministries, you, you're just on cruise control. She's like, but if you go here, you're going to be challenged, you're going to grow. And so before I knew it, I found myself here. Little did I know that I was going to marry her. And then she was going to come to the major leagues, which was a big old shock for her, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, major leagues. Yeah. Um, wow, that's powerful. Um, and that's awesome, um, Erica. And I know Erica, she's also taking English classes, so too. Yeah. So ella está tomando también clases de inglés. ¿Verdad? ¿verdad? Yeah, y, um, y qué bueno porque tiene um, valiente, right? ¿Cómo se dice? Valentía, valentía um, para hacer parte de nuestro ministerio porque somos de inglés. Mm -hmm. Pero tú estás ahí uh, con, uh, pegado con su esposo y, mm -hmm. y está ayudando y todo. Y, ¿Y cómo te sientes? Pues al principio sí fue un poco difícil. So at first it was a little bit difficult. Porque es como si estuviera Estados Unidos en México. It was uh, as if like uh, the United States was in Mexico is what she's uh, saying. Sí, tenía I, conocimiento del inglés. I knew a little bit of understanding of the English language. Pero sí me hacía un poco dificultoso um, tener conversaciones con mm -hmm. personas. But it, was, it is difficult to have me, for myself to have conversations with people. Pero ahora yo le doy gracias a Dios. But I just, you know, thank God now. Porque yo sé que todo esto era parte de su plan. Because I know all this was part of his plan. Y porque yo siento que él sabe lo que necesitamos. Because mm -hmm. I believe that I, I think he knows what we, what we need. Y yo necesitaba y necesito ser estirada. And I, I knew that I needed to be stretched. 
mm. para que Dios pueda sacar mi máxima capacidad. So God could take out my maximum capacity. Entonces estoy en el lugar correcto. So I'm in the correct place. Y usted tiene um, dones. 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 I was going to say donas, pero <laughs> <laughs> eso es otra cosa. Dones. Y usted me dijo una vez que Dios um, hablé a usted un promeso. Explica qué promesa le dio. Maybe we should translate. So, um, the, uh, Sister Liz is asking my wife a question that was once told to within a conversation as far as spiritual gifts and she wants her to emphasize a little bit about that as far as what gifts and what was the conversation about. Sí, bueno, me dijo que yo iba a cantar en inglés. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was told one time in a service that I was going to sing and worship in English. And then this is before you even came or knew Jose? Esto es antes de que tú conocieras o, o sabías de este ministerio, ¿verdad? Right? No, fue antes. Yeah. Un sí, poco antes. antes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so que conoció. Sí, un poco antes de conocerlo. Mm -hmm. So it was before she actually met me. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's where they told you that you were going to be singing in English. Y ahí es donde te dijeron que ibas a cantar en inglés. Sí, ahí me dijeron. Yo no lo podía creer, no, no tenía sentido, mm -hmm. porque yo estaba sirviendo en la alabanza en un ministerio en español. Y, o sea, como, como en inglés. So, Pero, when I, so when I was told, it didn't make any sense because I didn't know about my now husband and I was in the Spanish ministry, I was in worship, and I was singing in Spanish, so. Pero ahora ya todo tiene sentido. But now everything makes sense. Mm -hmm. Qué bueno. Qué, qué bonito, porque todos, like everyone here um, in Victory Outreach, there's a place for everyone. And even with Erica, there, I know there's, um, you know, that um, language barrier, but she's still pushing to speak you know, to try to speak English. Um, we have our translated services on Sunday. Um, and what I love is that she has a, a desire, yes. a desire to grow in the ministry, a desire to learn English and to worship. Sometimes she gets very nervous, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but like she says, the Lord brought her here to be stretched, you know, and to fulfill the call of God in her life and, her, and in her husband's life. And so it's one of the beautiful things you see, right? I think that's, yeah. I think that's our reward, right, honey? Um, as we see when people come in and the restoration or the simulation or the, you know, the, how God just works and moves in the lives of, of, of his people. And we are a people here in Tijuana. We call it like the in-between. You know, it's, uh, it's a little difficult if you've never experienced um, deportation or, or, or don't have any family members that have been deported. It's a total culture shock uh, from one world to another. And um, so the cultivating or the simulation of cultures is, is, can be very challenging. Um, but uh, we see, like she says, um, between them two, how God brought two different people together, and it was like two worlds being collided as one. And only God does that. Only God does that work. Huh, honey? Yeah. Uh, and Jose, I want to ask you a question. Um, what, how and why did you get deported? Well, so at the end of um, 2008, like I mentioned, I... God, I was obviously, since I was 22 and forward, I was living the life. Like I mentioned, the double life at my full-time job, uh, six days a week, more than 50 hours a week. But uh, every night or every weekend, you know, I would be out there in the streets. Uh, I caught a case, just to simplify it. I ended up uh, getting picked up by the feds, which uh, some of you guys know, whenever you go to the feds, they don't mess around. They're always throwing, uh, you know, long numbers at you. And so, uh, but the difference was that when I went to prison, I knew why I was there. It wasn't like I cried out, you know, why am I here? Or why God? But I knew that he had a calling for me. And so I just fully surrendered. I just, you know, sought God, you know, prayer, serving, worshiping, ministering, 
uh, fasting, you know, like I mentioned uh, to, you, to you guys uh, last night, um, it was my spiritual honeymoon, you know. I, those three years that I got at the end um, were just uh, the most the best three years of my life, if I could kind of say that. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make any sense, but it's just, um, you know, it, that's where I grew up and got to know the Lord in that intimate way. Spiritual gifts, callings, uh, prophetic word. I mean, it's just, uh, it's like that scripture that you shared earlier where, where uh, sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Yes. So we were in a place where there's oppression, you're locked up, people are uh, frustrated, People are seeking for something, but yet they vent in different ways. And so, you know, my my way of venting out was to seek God and get to know. So, him. so you you got saved in prison. Yeah. So, what what has been the difference between being saved in prison and then you got once you got deported and then you're serving them now? Was there a difference? Well, the difference was that uh, you know a lot of people when they you know like I mentioned before is that you know it's happened. You know, we know a lot of I know a, a lot of friends that had their encounter with Jesus in prison or in the county or, or in the state. And then as soon as they come out, you know, they fall off or they backslide or the pressures of life or whatever it may be, or the enemies out, out, out here waiting for us. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I had that in mind that I knew that, um, yes, it was a spiritual honeymoon with the Lord, but when I knew that the, the real test was when I came out here. Right. So um, as far as I went through the, the, the trials, as far as deportation, the culture shock, um, the temptation, uh, separation, loneliness, everything that a, that a man, and then a, on top of that, the temptations that we have here in Tijuana, because as some right. similar uh, testimonies to, to other brothers, it's like, what is it that we're listening to when we're on our way in the bus to Tijuana? Yeah. You know, it's not just, oh, we're gonna go get tacos, it's like, we're gonna go to the, uh, to the red light district, to the Cahuila, we're gonna go to a, a hotel, we're gonna go get drunk. We're gonna go to the party party zone and all that. And so, so let me, let me stop you there. So, as you're hearing all that, what was your thoughts? My thought is that I was just grateful that I had someone waiting for me. Mm, you know, okay. so I had a couple of brothers that were had already gone through the process, came out, and so I, I had a like a buddy system, you could say. So yeah. it, it, it was a shock absorber for me. So it wasn't right. like I I was gonna go out to fend for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, they they went to pick me up at the line. But I remember, you know, that, that uh, I call it the walk of shame. I don't know if you guys remember when, when, yes, you, when you're yes. going through that little hallway and you're like, man, it's just going to, to new territory. Even though I knew God had a, a plan and a purpose for me, I knew that it was going to be the difficult. The uncertainty of yes, it. Yes, yes. I mean, it's walk always. The unknown. <laughs> because um, I think you had mentioned um, when we were talking to you, like, um, that was your first time ever getting in trouble. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you didn't have no record. You didn't have, you know, you know, any other criminal, you know, history or yeah, mm -hmm. criminal history. So this was like your one time got caught, you know, sentenced and then deported. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, what the difference was that I had already fully surrendered. And so when I was about to come out, I, w I was under the, that almost like a pressure you could say, but I knew that I had, to, I wanted to be the difference for God, not for myself. But I wanted to, like, I because people were looking at me, you know, they were like, well, we'll see what happens with this guy. If he's, is he going to fall into the same thing as the other ones? If they right. found God in prison or Jesus in prison, and as soon as they got out, they fall. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, you know what, God, I don't want to do that to you. I, I want to continue to walk. Mm -hmm. I want to continue to serve and just uh, receive everything that you have in store for my life. So. Mm -hmm. right. And since you've been here all these years now, what was one of the hardest uh, um Hardest experiences or situation they had to face here in TJ. I think the, it goes back to my previous relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we went through that. Uh, it wasn't just a, oh things didn't work out and I'm not going to go over there, but there was uh, uh, infidelity involved, and so it was very painful because um, you know there, there was uh, there was love, there was yeah. a relationship. You know we had a child together, and for things not to work out, then on top of that you're getting deported. And so everything that you had planned did not go that way. And so uh, to go through, the, through that process, and, uh, and just before we kind of get into that, the, the thing that helped me the most through those processes is, is to continue to serve God. And I remember because I wasn't the only one. I remember when I vented to a, to a brother of mine and I told him, you know what, this is what happened and this is the reason why it's not working out. 
And, he, and I remember he just grabbed me and said, it's okay, just keep serving God. Mm. And, it, and it didn't make sense to me because I was like, right. how can you tell me that? And he's like, because right. it happened to me. And he had been married for wow. about nine years or whatever. So, you know, and it was just like a, a process that happened to him. And he was able to be there for me, to minister to me in that time that he knew what it felt like. He knew what I was going to go through and he gave me the right advice. And then we had other brothers that I know that some of them might be watching is that they went through the same process. And then I knew, I was like, man, God, like, you know, it, it hurt. It was a yeah. painful process, but there was, there's many others. That, because one that was serving God and something like that to happen, some can think, man, why God? And be mad yeah. and can turn, right? Yeah. We're not mature in, in the Lord and understanding that. You know? and, and it's happened to her like, you know, you, you just God doesn't move the way that you expected him to. Right. And I mean, you can be fasting and praying, but if it's really not part of God's will and he wants to take those areas because he sees ahead, then, you know, we don't understand it at the time, you know. But that scripture comes in, uh, into mind, right, that you don't know what I'm doing, but later on you'll understand. And mm -hmm. so that's one of those things that I, that I faced. So, I mean, along with separation and... Uh, not being able to have my daughter with me all the time and the uncertainty of uh, how I was going to be able to provide, um, you know, having a business on the other side, making dollars and, you know, coming over here to yeah. pesos and the economy here, even though, you know, we come to call center jobs and you have a better pay than, you know, the, the average Mexican wage, but, you know, still it doesn't, it does not compare. Yeah, not mm. even half. No. Not even half. And then, Erica, uh, I want to ask you a question. So te quiero preguntar algo, Erica. Uh, him coming from drugs and, and, and uh, gang violence. So el que venía del trasfondo de pandillas y violencia y drogas y así. Uh, and then you not growing up in that. Y que tú no, tú no creciste en eso. Has there been any indifferences in your guys' marriage through that? ¿Ha habido indiferencias en su matrimonio por medio de eso? No. No. That didn't scare you? ¿No te espantaba? No. No, porque siento que cuando él entregó su vida a Cristo, como que esa vida realmente quedó atrás. So is she saying that like when, to answer it, that when he came to Christ, he left all that behind. Sí, realmente no hemos tenido dificultad con eso. <laughs> so no. really we haven't had any difficulties with that. That's good. That's good. It's, it's, it's different, right, Liz? Because they, they come from two different worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah. But and you know when it's God, you know, it's able to be a testimony and what God's able to mm -hmm. do in the midst of all that and bring two people from two different types of worlds together and, and you know when God's involved, you know, in the center of everything. Yeah, and now they're living out their purpose um, that God has called them to and they're growing, they're growing in in his word, they're growing in his truth, and it's beautiful to see when they're a part. They're a part of all of our events, our outreaches. You know, we go out and we do um, um, Código Rojo, you know? ¿Te acuerdas cuando, cómo te sentí cuando su primera vez, cuando fuimos con nosotros a evangeliz, evangelizar o uh, hicieron el Código Rojo? Es una experiencia uh, muy bonita mm -hmm. es una experiencia que la verdad yo se la recomiendo porque es es una experiencia que no se olvida es ay, es simplemente dar amor a esas personas que, que las ves y que no tienen nada y, y, y wow. poderles dar Un, un poco de esperanza, mm -hmm. sobre todo de Cristo, saber que no están solos, que, que, que hay alguien que verdaderamente los ama y que dio su vida para ellos y, y que les puede cambiar la vida como a nosotros. Mm -hmm. Entonces, es una experiencia muy, muy, muy bonita. Mm -hmm. So it was a very beautiful experience. She said that she was very impacted in the sense that to be able to just have the opportunity to give hope uh, the same way that it was given to herself and others that, you know, they can go out to the streets and, and show love. You know, ultimately that was uh, what came out of that as far as the outreaches and Code Red for her first time. Yeah, because it's something, you know, our ministry is very unique. Uh, we're, we're definitely a ministry that is stays on the cutting edge um, and always, uh, you know, we're an inner city ministry. 
And so I think your first time when you when you really had ex been exposed, right, when we went to uh, the national conference, I think, remember, he had mentioned it to you, like, wow, he, he was able to see oh, yeah. our ministry yeah. in a bigger or in a larger, uh, yeah. How did you feel about that, Jose? Well, I, I was... Uh overwhelming experience, but also it was exciting because, uh, like I mentioned and I've shared before, uh, to me it was just kind of confirmation, you know, confirmation that, because I did have my struggles, even being here three and a half years, um, am I in the right place, if this is what God has for me, and then to go to the conference was just like, you are in the right place, you, I don't make mistakes, and I have you exactly where you need to be, so, you know. That's beautiful. <clears throat> and so... Um, uh, maybe you could tell us, uh, how did you arrive to where you're at today now? You know, happily married. Well, maybe tell us a little bit. Well, how did you get to where you're at today now? Because we, we heard a lot of the struggles, right? Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the struggle of uh, transitioning, you know, the struggle of adjusting, and then um, a lot of the pain that you had to go through with separation. Yeah. Because we want to let people know there's viewers there watching us uh, tonight. And there's a lot of us that maybe when we first got here, we felt like there was no hope. Uh, we can't make it. Uh, you know, uh, how am I going to live there? How am I going to be there with my wife, the kids, all that? But we want to let people know that uh, with Christ, everything's possible. Mm -hmm. As long as we have God in the center of it, everything's possible. So we've uh, shared that with us today, that you've been a man uh, serving God and how God brought you and Erica together. And yeah, we've shared about the struggles, but we also want to share God's faithfulness, you know, through that struggle and where you're at today. Well, I mean, the, I think the key thing, um, if I can kind of put it in a nutshell, it would be serving God through the process. That's, that's what kept me throughout the struggles and the pain and the heartache and the trials and temptation and, uh, you know, my past life, all that, you know, to be able to, the key for me was to serve God through the process. I think that advice from that brother um, was probably the best advice that, that anyone can get, really, because as Christians, a lot of times we, you know, we have the, like as Pastor mentions, the Christian language, and God is good, and, and God is love, and, you know, I'm blessed, but really, you know, how are we dealing through the situations? And so my focus was just, you know, if I surrendered my life in prison, I came out here, went through the trials, I continue to serve God, and now I'm reaping all the benefits of the trials, you know, through um, financial difficulties, through separation, through loneliness, through, uh, you know, all the things that we can face as a deportee, you know, until now to see all the, the fruits, you know, because I, I, I feel that I'm in a, in a mountaintop, you could say, you know, right now in the, in the, in the place where God has me. In regards to ministry, I mean, I know you guys mentioned the children ministry and the translating, but I'm also the overseer when it comes to the prayer. Yeah. So yes. you know, that's to me, it's a very uh, privileged position to be able to cover, you know, my pastors, cover our leaders, our church. You know, the responsibility behind it, and you know, covering your blind spots and angles and ask God for discernment to be able to, you know, just to grow His church and, and to continue to, you know, follow your heartbeat. So. Yeah. Um, real quick, I, I didn't, we didn't ask this question because normally we, we ask this question, I think, is did you ever feel like going back right when you got deported? Yes. Okay. And, and you know what, it's funny. Everybody feels that. It's funny because, you know, like the whole, you know, it sounds good that I was fully surrendered. And, yeah, right. And, I mean, you're, it, you're, it, it's it, feeling good here, yeah, yeah. story, it, but there's it, some real struggle. There, there's, I, Times I'm sure you felt like quitting, yeah, or like giving up because, mm -hmm. you know. And I and I think that every everyone goes through that process, even though they say they've, they've assimilated or they've been here for X amount of years. Yeah. There's a point, maybe more than once. And so for me, um, when I when I got deported and I was in the previous ministry, uh, the thing that kept me obviously, you know, it sounded good that I was, uh, you know, serving God through the process. But you know, they they gave me the opportunity and almost like an ultimatum is like you want to serve God so this is what we expect of you we uh, they asked for a full year commitment of full-time ministry and so it's either that or you go out and do your own thing and not in the sense of go sin or, or do your own mm -hmm. but you know not have the sense of responsibility of 
having to minister, you know, uh, 24-7. And so I told him, yes, but by the eighth month, around the ninth month, I was, you know, I was cruising, things were good, God was moving in my life, and then that, man, how could I say it? that robbing of peace really came, because that's what it is. You know, it just, uh, my faith, my countenance, my attitude changed, uh, anxiety set in, which mm. I, it's really rare because I don't, I don't like to struggle with those, especially when I came, you know, right. whether you experience the peace of God, right? Um, but it, it came to me and I remember I told the, the, the leaders of the church and I told them, you know what, I'm just going to finish my year and then I'm going to make an attempt to go back, you know, and I'm going to try to cross over. And so just to kind of add to that um, testimony is that um, I had no one really knew besides two leaders, right? And then the, the pastor from that from that uh, church that I was at, uh, she told me one time because she was a, a, a lady pastor, without knowing, you know, and she told me the means of which I was attempting to cross after I finished my year, and so I was trying to figure out if I would cross through a boat, cross through the line. Or cross through a plane. Those are the options that they're depending on the price, you know, because you get stuff like that. <laughs> and so I remember she knew nothing about it, but she told me she was like, you know what? She's like, I, I see that there's something, you know, wrong. There's something that I feel that you know you're not telling me. But you know, if God ever allows you to go back to the states, it's not going to be through land. It's not going to be through a boat. And and it's going. And if if you get, do get to go over there, it's going to be legally. But, you know, who, whoever told her that I was making right. plans of going through a boat or going through a plane, but, you know, I knew that God was speaking to me. And so that, that's when I had to just say, you know what, let go of that, that idea. It, it was part of my process because I even had to, you know, kind of let people down, including my daughter, mm -hmm. because she was ex expecting me to go back and she had caught wind that I was making plans once I finished my year of ministry, then I would go back go back to work and, and, you know, try to be there as a, as, as her father. But then when I... You're real close to your daughter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she was, uh, you know, what does that say in the scripture, the apple of my eye? Oh, so, daddy's girl. Daddy's girl, yeah. Yeah. So it was a difficult process, her not understanding me going to jail and having to visit me, right. which, I mean, beyond the deportation, I think if you were to ask me what was the most difficult time in my life, was every time that she had to say goodbye and visit, you know. Mm. That, that's where the more, you know, heart-wrenching were. Mm -hmm. I felt that right here, the, the right. knot in my, in my throat, so that's... Yeah, I think that's for everyone, you know, when we have to come and visit. Um, it is the hardest thing when you have to leave your loved one behind and there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing in your power, there's no money that can change that situation and you're just stuck. I felt, I felt the same, you know, before I made the transition myself. And it was hard and I would leave in tears and then I had to wait two hours on the line. Oh gosh, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those, it, it is heart-wrenching. Heart um, but, um, but nevertheless, you know, it's what our, I believe it's our faith that really pulls us through. Right, honey? Yes. No, no, that's heartfelt. Um, you know, because I remember those visits and had to say goodbye to my family, even here when they would come and visit, uh, you know. Uh, but with all that, Jose, you know what? We're going to, uh, we have no more questions, right? Mm -hmm. Erica, do you want to ask her anything else? I think Erica. <laughs> um, you see, when, I just want to let you guys know, for those who wait for a woman of God, you see how, how Jose got blessed? So that's why it's so important that you wait on God, <laughs> right? So I just wanted to throw that plug in for all the single godly men, right? That God will bring the right one in his right time. Um, and then so that you can pursue the call of God in your life. Because I know we, we uh, I think my husband always messes with, Jose about Ecuador or about, you know, and he, God's already envisioning Jose, you know, he, he's like, right, huh? Yeah, We're right. already praying about the border cities. Right. Mexicali, uh, what was the other one? Juarez. 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 Cause Stay he, tuned. Because he even said, man, pastor, even if it was Mexicali or Juarez, 
we already talked about it. <laughs> ¿Verdad, Erika? <laughs> make, sure, make sure there's air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but no, in all seriousness, this is um, some of the, the, I think the most, I think it's the most, one of the hardest things I've ever experienced. It's very similar of losing a loved one. Um, when you lose a loved one, you have to learn how to live life without that person. And so your world changes. Well, in the same way, after deportation, you have to learn how to live without the U.S. and it changes your whole world. And so it's, it's not as easy, right, to, um, to um, transition, but through God, through Christ, thank God, yeah. you know, that we had. And he says you could, uh, we could do all things to Christ who gives us strength. Yeah. And, you know, um, tonight if you're there and he says, man, I've been ministered or I can relate to this story with Jose and Erica and. You know, there's many more, more uh, stories that are going to come, mm -hmm. so we want you to stay tuned. But uh, before we close it off, I want a Jose right now, 30 seconds. Uh, real quick, honey. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, uh, but if you guys want to leave comments and questions, feel free to do so there at YouTube or Facebook. You know, let us know what you think. Let yeah. us know what you think about uh, the stories that are that are. Um, um, you know that that are being broadcasted and we also have our phone number that it's going to be there on the screen you yeah. can always look us up on Facebook or on YouTube and the information will be there on your screen but we would like to hear from you so let us know what you think right? yes. Amen. if you have Praise any questions Lord. or ideas Amen. so you got 30 seconds Jose, to speak to to the viewers right there you know and then I want you to close it off with a word of prayer Amen, amen. If, uh, like what Pastor was mentioning, if at all you were ministered through my story, my testimo testimony, my struggles, travails, um, I just want to encourage you guys. Um, every time when I give my testimony, I, I like to emphasize in the fact that when we were in the States, you could say that we had it all. Uh, we had financial stability, we had a good job, even education, whatever it may be. But nevertheless, I can reflect and I can look back and I know that even after having the, the financial stability, the business, even family, uh, you know, hobbies and all that, I would wake up and look at myself in the mirror and I would hate myself. I, I was depressed. I, I, there was something missing within my heart and I didn't know what it was until Christ came into my life. And so with that being said, I just know that after I accepted God into my life, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, even though we have gone through struggles and travails and through our process, uh, God has been there every step of the way. Pastor mentions uh, the scripture, Philippians 4.13, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That is something that we don't just recite, we live. It's palpable, it's tangible, it's something that we can say with a conviction that we want to portray and we want to transmit to you, the viewer, that have gone through similar stories or have your own testimony, have your own story. But nevertheless, if you try it with God, he will turn things around. The Word of God tells us that, uh, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. And even though some of those actions or some of those sins are, uh, cause this spiral effect or this downward spiral or consequences of our sin, God can still cover it with his grace. And so I'm a living testimony of what God has done in my life. I have a beautiful wife now. I have a blended family. I'm on the verge of reestablishing a connection with my daughter Come to on. be able to, it doesn't make any sense, but we forgot to mention that God has blessed me with a small business here in Tijuana, and I'm uh, gonna have the ability to help my daughter in the States with, with, with finances that I make here. And so the promises of God are just unfolding that you know, that, that God is not bound by, by a border that, you know, or an economy that he can bless us with finances here in Mexico and we can help our family members. And he's just trailblazing. He's just making a way. He's my anchor. And he's going to, if he's doing it for me, he's going to be able to, do it, to yes. do it for you as well. Amen. So with that being said, I, I just want to, I want to pray for you. I want to take a, a few moments to... Uh, just be able to reflect if this at all ministered to you, if you feel a tugging within your heart, 
if you feel uh, uh, that God is speaking to you, you know, that he uses uh, vessels like ourselves that, uh, that were broken, that, you know, I could even say for myself, wretched at times, but nevertheless, his grace, you know, uh, fills me and anoints me and it overflows. And I just want to, uh, I just want to, for you to have that opportunity as well to, to uh, feel the peace of God, to feel his blessings upon your life and to, uh, you know, the word of God tells us that he gives us a hope that does not disappoint. Yeah. And so I just want to uh, share that with you guys. So if you guys can close your eyes and uh, bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come here before you in Jesus' name, giving you the honor, glory, and praise due to your name. Lord Father, this evening we just thank you, Father, for your word. God, we thank you for this living testimony, God. My wife said that, you know, when she met me, God, not to glory myself, but that the card of presentation was Christ, yes. that, I, that, that, I, that she was able to see Christ in me, God. And so what a humbling uh, testimony, God, that I just move aside for you to receive all the honor and the glory, God, that if you did it for me, you could do it for the viewer that's looking at us, that even though he might feel that he's not worthy, that he may feel that he's done way too much, that you would be able to forgive, God, that you are a merciful God, that you are a God who is slow to anger and quick to forgive, God. So we just pray right now for that person who's viewing, God, if there's a need that you would meet it, God, I pray, Lord, Father, that your presence would be palpable. I pray that your presence, God, would minister, Lord Father, in a mighty way, Lord Father, that you would transmit your peace, as it says in your word in Philippians 4, 7, a peace which surpasses all understanding, yes. that you would guard the heart and the mind of that viewer, God, that person, that, that, that uh, person that's in a, that is a believer, it might be in a backslidden condition, God, I pray, Lord Father, that if he finds himself here in Tijuana, and he backslid because of the trials and the temptation and the and and, and everything the, that the enemy uh, tries to build up as a stronghold, Lord Father. We pray for that person right now, God, that you would restore God because of the word of God tells us that you are forever married to the backslider, God. Yes. So I pray, Lord Father, that you would restore, Father, the backslider, that you would restore families, God. And I pray, Father, for those that are, that are single. I pray for those that might be th going through their struggle and their thoughts thoughts and their minds, God, that, you know, maybe that relationship didn't work with the mother of your child or your spouse on the other side, and, and, and you're thinking things that, that are hopeless and lost. There's still a hope. God still is moving within your lives as long as you open your heart. So I pray right now, Lord Father, that you would move upon your people as we worship you and we exalt you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, what an awesome testimony here with Jose and Erica. But we want to encourage you. If you know somebody that could be blessed through this testimony, maybe uh, they didn't tune in, but you know someone, we want you to share this link, share our channel, uh, Victor Arich, uh, uh, Victor Arich, uh Tijuana, uh, on our Facebook, on YouTube. We want to let people know that God is moving here in our city and uh, we want to encourage you, stay tuned. We have many more stories, uh, you know, right, Liz? We got many more stories that are going to come. Well, maybe my wife can share a few words before we close it off. Yeah, no, I was just going to uh, agree and, and add to what you're saying that it is so unique, you right. know, our ministry here. We're the first English speaking uh, Victory Outreach Church here in Mexico. And, you know, there are thousands and thousands of English speaking people. We have uh, call centers all over Centro, all over this area that are filled with hundreds of English speaking people. Right. And um, it's just amazing of what God is doing. It's something that doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. but yet to God, of course, you know, it, he had it all planned because he had us in mind. And it's so special to us. I think, it, you know, we thank God for our pastors, Pastor Joseph's a dream for believing yes. in us, for believing in this work, our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, who God spoke to him, showed him, man, Mo, you know, there's maybe, maybe the call is here. And, right. and we remember those uh, times where uh, pivotal moments in our, in our walk that God has show, shown us and has directed us through our leaders and pastors. And God is 
really raising up a beautiful ministry here in Tijuana yeah. in one of the most notorious cities of all the Ooh, world. Really? And you're talking up. about, I think the top three, right? Yes. Uh, one of the dangerous cities of all the world, if not Mexico. And, but yet we know that where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And yeah, we see that this is like a light, like a, a lighthouse, you know, a, a house of hope, a house of restoration. Yeah. This is part of the vision that God's called our church, right, honey? Maybe yeah. you can. Um, yeah, he's called us. So we want to encourage you to stay tuned. Uh, once again, we want to thank each and every one of the viewers to tuning in to This Is My Story. God bless you. Have a good night. We love you. And look, look for our next one next week. Amen. God bless.